Hello everybody, Kiefer here again with another video for you. Today is a bit of a weird one. Um, I'm going to be talking about Bitcoin in a world without computers. It's an idea that's been sort of stuck in my head for a while and I wanted to sort of work out if it was possible and if it was, what would this world look like? This idea of a Bitcoin in a world without computers came from a conversation I had with one of my colleagues a while ago. The, the image that we had come up with was of these monks uh, somewhere deep in the mountains uh, manually performing hashes in great big books um, in the sort of religious quest to try to find the next block this sort of image stuck in my head and I always thought it was an interesting idea and um, so today I decided to sort of explore this idea of a uh, computerless Bitcoin and, and see what it might look like and how it might work. In order for me to talk a little bit about a Bitcoin protocol without computers um, we first need to understand a few things about the basics of Bitcoin. Okay, so for this I'm going to focus on these four main Bitcoin basics, which is mining, nodes, transactions, and communication. Mining is the process of discovering new blocks and minting new Bitcoin. I'm sure anyone watching this video would be at least somewhat familiar with the concept. The node in Bitcoin is a uh, piece of software which runs the Bitcoin protocol and has a copy of the blockchain. Transactions. I'm sure you know what a transaction is on Bitcoin, sending Bitcoins from one address to the other. And communication. And by communication I mean how Bitcoin nodes communicate with each other, how you broadcast a transaction, things like that. I guess I'll go through these one by one and discuss how it might work in a world without computers. Now, the process of Bitcoin mining, the process of uh, discovering the next block in the blockchain and minting new Bitcoins and confirming transactions. Bitcoin mining does all these things at the same time. Now, in order to mine a Bitcoin, a Bitcoin miner has to perform hashes on Bitcoin blocks that they generated until they find a valid block. A valid block is a block whose hash is lower than the uh, difficulty target agreed upon by the protocol. The difficulty target can change, and etc. etc. If you would like a more in depth explanation on uh, what the process of Bitcoin mining is, then you can watch my other video. I'll put it in the description below. Now, in order for a block to be discovered in today's Bitcoin, at the current um, difficulty target and hash power, it takes somewhere around, I think, two trillion trillion hashes. Now this, now this number obviously varies quite a bit uh, from block to block. This, you know, is obviously entirely possible by in a world with computers because it happens every ten minutes. Um, but in a world without computers, would it be even possible to do this many hashes? And the answer is no. Now, this guy Ken, he did a video where he started manually performing the uh, SHA-256 uh, hash function on a Bitcoin block to see how long it would take him to do one hash. It took him about 16 minutes to do one sixty-fourth of the work required to perform a hash. Uh, so he calculated that it would take, you know, about two days um, to do one hash by hand on paper with a pencil. Uh, so, so as you can probably, so as you can probably tell this is kind of impossible for even an army of millions and millions of people to do. Alright, so say that people got really really good at um, hand calculating 
this uh, algorithm, this hash, and it took them about 16 hours or two work days to um, complete one hash of a block header. Um, so even with an army of, you know, a billion people, it's totally infeasible that they would ever find the next valid block. Um, even with everyone on Earth trying at the same time, it, it, it probably just wouldn't happen because we're talking about two trillion trillion hashes. Like, I can't even begin to comprehend the size of that number. So, as a result, it's already looking pretty bleak for our post-apocalyptic Bitcoin users. Um, we've kind of established that it would be basically infeasible for them to find a block. Now, what these people could do is that they could hard fork the, uh, the uh, protocol to lower the difficulty target significantly even possibly lower the difficulty target below what the minimum current difficulty target is. Um, I'm not ex I didn't do the calculations for that, so I'm not exactly sure what would make it feasible. So right now the process of Bitcoin mining uh, results in a block time of about 10 minutes. In our world without computers, the block time would probably have to be significantly longer probably something more like a couple weeks or a month for a number of reasons including number one being that if it takes two days to perform a single hash then 10 minutes of a block time is completely not a realistic target so say the block time is a month that would give you know a reasonable amount of time for a large workforce to do a large number of hashes um, and to broadcast that block um, within a reasonable amount of time. Now there's a number of employment models that these uh, these miners could follow. It could be a, uh, a mining pool type thing where uh, if you discover the next block and you're with your paper and pencil then so you and this mining pool share the uh, the the money that results from it or it could be something or it could be something like everyone and their grandma uh, just performs hashes on their time off in hopes of finding the next block. Or it could be that mining pools have big rooms of uh, employees or slaves or whatever performing hashes and uh, they just take it all and, and pay their their manual miners peanuts. There's There's a number of economic models that this could lead to. I think some of them more horrifying than others, obviously. Now, okay, so we got the mining figured out. Well, let's say we got the mining figured out. The The next step is, uh, say, how about we talk about the uh, communication aspect of it. So, you have your mining pool that you own, um, and you got your all your minions manually performing hashes for, you know, 16 hours a day. Um, and one of them finds the next valid block. How does this work? What do you do at this point? Um, basically, I guess you would have to make a bunch of copies of this uh, this this valid block um, and uh, get a bunch of guys on horses to, in a way, broadcast this uh, this uh, new block and send it out to all the other mining pools and all the other nodes. When then they can take your your block and verify it themselves by hand by doing all of the hashes and and whatnot by themselves and uh, if it's valid then they can accept it the obvious flaw here is that in the current Bitcoin protocol it you know takes at most a, a few seconds to broadcast a block to the network there's you know very little latency and as a result not a huge possibility of orphaned blocks Orphan blocks do happen, but it's not a huge, huge problem. In our computerless Bitcoin world, it would probably take days to broadcast your block and have it be accepted by other nodes. And so this is another inefficiency and problem uh, to add onto the pile. So we got the fact that the massive amount of human labor that is required to uh, mine and whatnot, but also it takes days 
to broadcast a valid block. Not looking good for offline Bitcoin. So I mentioned nodes. Nodes in the current Bitcoin protocol where we have computers and other such luxuries, they're pretty straightforward. They are the Bitcoin software running on your computer and you have a copy of the Bitcoin protocol and, and other peers on the network are able to connect with your node and exchange information and uh, send transactions to each other. It's, you, you should have a decent understanding of a node if you're watching this video and if you're not then I'm not sure how you found yourself here and I apologize. Now in our world without computers and people are trying to use Bitcoin still, a node would be I guess anybody who has you know the big big book of Bitcoin who you know they can open it up to a page and they have the entire um, transaction history in this big book. It would probably be a lot of big books actually. They would be able to function the same way as a node currently functions. They could look at you know the blockchain and look at a transaction that someone is presenting them with and compare the transaction to the blockchain and say okay yes this is a valid transaction or whatever. The problem with this is that in order to validate that a transaction is valid um, you need to do quite a bit of hashing which as we know from before takes like 16 hours of human labor at least um, so in order to validate one transaction it could take days of human labor and this is not fun at all that like that would just not be cool but that's how it would have to work the thing about it is that Performing these hashes on a computer is computationally uh, uh, trivial, but it's computationally fucking insurmountable as a human being. Well, not insurmountable, just really annoying. So what would probably end up happening is, well, what happens a lot today, uh, people would look to trusted third parties to validate transactions, which anybody who's using a thin client uh, wallet is already doing. So basically, you could go to a Bitcoin node, which might be analogous to a bank branch, and uh, ask them to validate a transaction for you, and they would say, yep, that's a valid transaction, it's on our blockchain. Um, so that would take quite a bit of the difficulty out of it, but it also kind of defeats the nature of Bitcoin as a trustless, decentralized, no third parties type deal. As I said before, it is conceivable that an individual could act as their own node. Um, and have their volumes of books containing the blockchain that they can reference. Terribly inefficient idea, but... So an important element of the Bitcoin protocol is the ability to create and send and broadcast transactions. This much is obvious. Now, in our no-computer-Bitcoin world, this goes from a task which is reasonably trivial in difficulty to something that is a big pain in the ass in reality. I looked it up, I read some articles about the process of building a transaction, and it's super complicated. There is quite a bit of hashing of things going on. There is some elliptical curve stuff going on, whatever that means. Um, there's, you know, public and private key cryptography. There's signing transactions with your private key. It's, um, it would be quite a bit of a nightmare to do by hand. Probably again several days worth of human labor to create a transaction. Um, obviously not something that most um, people have the time to do, especially in a uh, world without computer technology. So now say you have accomplished this feat of uh, mathematical uh, ingenuity and you have uh, built your transaction. Now you need to somehow get your transaction onto the next block. Um, and people do this uh, in the regular Bitcoin protocol by, you know, broadcasting their transaction to peers and then it can go into the memory pool. And then if it has a high enough transaction fee, it'll get accepted onto the next block or the block after or whatever. You have to somehow broadcast this transaction to miners. So I guess that would look something like, you know, you go to the town square and you take your transaction, you nail it onto the bulletin board and hope that, you know, some 
mining pool operator comes down and rips it off and says, oh, this is a good transaction, I'll put it on my, my, my uh, block that I'm mining right now. Um, or you could, you know, take it to a particular mining pool operator or node and say, here's my transaction, please put it on your block or something or take it to a bunch of different uh, mining pool operators and hope that one or more of them accept it onto your uh, onto their block and when the next block is found then I guess you have to get a copy of this block to see if your transaction made it onto it and got confirmed all a very long process with our one month block time that we theorized uh, would be required if there's one thing I've learned in the process of making this video it's that Bitcoin operated without computers is completely infeasible and completely pointless and just a terrible idea. So if the world, you know, ever collapses into anarchy and there's no computers anymore, then don't try to keep Bitcoin going. There's no point. It's a total waste of time. It's easy to say, you know, it could work because there's a lot of things that could work that don't work my thinking on it is that Bitcoin offline could work. It would be terrible, but it could work. That's the thing about the Bitcoin protocol. It is exactly that. It's a protocol. And a protocol is simply um, a sort of standard for the order and structure of communications between parties. It doesn't necess no, no protocol necessarily needs to be on a computer. And the fact of the matter is, is that computers are designed to be analogous and to do things that are in real life. And so it's a two-way street. If you can do something on a computer, then you can probably do it in reality. Um, like, you could probably make a terrible video game with a really low frame rate by, you know, doing the, the calculations by hand and just... Um, moving candles around behind pieces of colored glass uh, based off these calculations to form uh, like a matrix uh, that replicates a screen with really low resolution and you could you could create a, a video game offline by doing that. So I've concluded that it's a terrible idea for exchanging money and monetary sh So I've come to the conclusion that an offline Bitcoin is a terrible idea. If you don't have computers, don't bother with Bitcoin because um, it's no better than digging gold out of the ground and stamping it into coins. In fact, it's significantly worse than doing that. Um, but I sort of come back to this image of these uh, monks living somewhere in the mountains attempting to find the next block on the Bitcoin blockchain after all the computers have been destroyed and I think that's where a Bitcoin without computers really makes sense because Bitcoin is almost a religion for a lot of people out there who you know really really believe in the potential of Bitcoin and so it sort of makes sense that in a computerless world it would uh, continue on in a sort of mythical and uh, mystical manner So, I guess that's the end of this video. I apologize for how weird it is. Hopefully you found these ideas kind of interesting. I know it's um, it's not entirely practical, or at all practical, um, of a discussion, but I thought it was somewhat interesting. Like the video if you want, subscribe if you care to. Um, Give me suggestions on what kind of other videos you might want to see because I need to stop doing ones that require so much research. Or if you like the ones with lots of research, then I'll keep I can keep doing those ones as well. Um, so I guess uh, I'll see you next time.